And so this project was born five years ago by Gene Parker saying to me, you can come to my class. And so I brought my middle years teacher candidates with me five times to her classroom and my teacher candidates got to begin by building community and engaging in formative assessment with students, then setting goals with Jean and I based on what we learned from the formative assessments, building a curriculum together based on the funds of knowledge the kids had and the goals, both the strengths that we saw in the kids and some of their stretches, and then they got to participate. I really enjoy having them in my room. It's great to have different perspectives. I feel like it's really important to the future of education to foster those relationships and have them work really, really well. And then we came back at the end of the term and participated in their summative assessment process. And so that was my first year, five visits, one person's classroom. But it began this journey of let's learn in a place. Let's come to understanding, and many of the learnings that my teacher candidates talked about at the end of that year were how they came to understand that every kid can learn, but kids are diverse. It's shifted their idea of learning practices that you go out and apply in the field versus who are the students we work with and how can I embrace their diversity and construct learning opportunities with and for them. The Institute Teacher Education Program, I think, is a valuable experience. It provides opportunities for new educators to see real-world application of various teaching techniques and how they're being applied in different contexts. So when we went to Rutland Middle School, I saw what the collaborative teacher approach to planning and maintaining their well-being looked like. I have a partner teacher, which allows a lot of co-thought and co-planning -co even as well as we're able to take the time to get together to not only encourage but also just to bounce ideas off of each other. I believe the big thing is that as a teacher you have to be okay with failing, trying stuff that maybe doesn't work, but stuff that goes beyond the norm. So we went from Jean with one classroom to then more classrooms at that school invited me in, but also we went to visit Kim Ondrick and her grade 6-7 classroom which she called the Ozone at Ellison Elementary in Vernon, School District 22. And then I found Paul Britton, who was teaching this grade eight interdisciplinary academy. And so then I had three partner schools. What that allowed my teacher candidates to see is that we can do the work that we're discussing in theory, and it is lived in practice. And so they were experiencing and learning in context in these three very different settings and seeing educators who were creating learning with and for kids that was inquiry-based, focused on deep learning and recognizing the whole child. That we have to look at motivation, we have to look at engagement, we have to look at design, and we're back to my research area, which is self-regulated learning. How can we develop that in these contexts? So the Junior Academy is an integrated program where all the teachers are working together, where you have a science teacher, a math teacher, humanities teachers, and then a special education teacher. And the point of the program is to have all the subjects taught holistically and through more of a project-based, inquiry-based model. We kind of have this, this fundamental idea that in order for us to really become 21st century learners, we needed to talk about the significance of, you know, it's not just an English class, a social studies class, a math, a science class. It's actually a piece of each one of those in, in everything that we do. The interdisciplinary is a tricky thing in high schools because we have bins, because they rotate through classes that are subject-based. And I think that one of the, the design beauties of the, the Junior Academy is that we've taken away the bins. Focusing on not just going straight into high school, like straight to switching classes all over the school. You're somewhere where you're comfortable. You're not with a whole bunch of different teachers every day. It's the same three teachers, you're comfortable around them. We do a lot of collaboration, we plan, we implement, we team teach, and it works to create a sense of community. I like how the teachers make it fun. Like, they don't just sit around, talk, monotone all day. They, they actually make jokes, they stop in the middle of the lesson and talk a little bit. I like those moments. The theories of the cooperative and collaborative classroom changed my approach. Instead of being focused on independent individual work, I became more grounded in doing group projects where the students were working together and learning from each other. And in some cases, it was the students who were teaching me more than I was teaching them. If we talked about inquiry, 
the theory behind inquiry in class and student choice and empowerment, then we were able to go to a place and watch a fully developed inquiry class in process. Well, right now we're doing an independent project, which I really like. Gives me a chance to do what I love to do. I really enjoyed the teacher candidates coming into the classroom as a group and having that supported network of your peers when you're in the classroom, I thought, is an awesome learning experience for them, just kind of paralleling like what I was doing with my colleagues in the academy where we're working together as a team and we have that support so it allows us to take risks as teachers. I think having the teacher candidates come in as a team with the support of each other allowed them to kind of take risks with the students there as well. I think the benefits for us are we get to sometimes watch the teacher candidates and then we actually sometimes get ideas from them on what we can do. They're coming out with some fantastic ideas and energy so we actually steal from them sometimes as well. Vernon Community School, that's now Kim Andrick's classroom, which was a 6-7 class. She combined with Marie Saskis, who was doing global ed at the high school. And so together they've created a middle school within the high school, which is a grade 7, 8, 9 combined classroom. And it's, again, an inquiry-based, co-constructed curriculum rooted in social justice. So the teaching and learning that occurs here amongst the teacher candidates, the students, the parents, Marie and I as the teachers in our CEA. I think what it, it does is promotes an environment where everyone is a teacher and everyone is a learner. And moving away from a hierarchical notion of, or more patriarchal, right, like we're older so we know everything, and uh, moving more into a model that acknowledges that children have as much to teach adults as adults have to teach kids. I think he brings his teacher candidates here because it's really unique. We learn while we're doing it and they're a lot more involved, I think, the teachers. So it's not just where some classes they sit and they tell you what you're doing. It's much more we're deciding what we want to learn. They give us the general idea and then we kind of go off onto it and do a presentation on it. What's been so powerful for my folks is they're seeing a combination of social emotional learning with the community circle self-regulated learning with kids defining and engaging in their increase and project-based learning where they're not only creating these plans and learning and exploring and reading and writing and learning and researching but then taking the work and putting it together synthesizing it to present to an audience because when you present to an authentic audience you use your skills in a much more powerful way. We did a reading in the summer that had to do with care and relationships you don't really get to see that until you go into the schools and you get to meet the kids and you get to understand that you know the most important thing about school isn't necessarily the content that the kids are learning but it's about the social and personal skills that they're growing into during their middle years. I just see the students rising to the occasion really believing that they are partnering with UBCO and with Leighton to help these teacher candidates to learn and grow and I think that's a really valuable experience for students this age to know that they are assisting in the, the learning and growing of adults. It was interesting to see what it's like working with UBC students because they're on the edge of becoming teachers. Having the opportunity to work with those teachers and those students in those contexts gave me a chance to try the theories out and really work with them as we were learning about them and find the ones that really resonated with me and having the opportunity to put those into practice right away has led to an enduring understanding of those theories and how they'll inform my practice as an educator. Then we got to add this year Eagle River Secondary School which is in Sycamus. Instead of offering English or science or math or socials, let's offer indigenous plants. Let's offer war. And so for six weeks, students choose these interdisciplinary experiences and they go deep because by choosing, you engage. But then you still have to design a learning environment and experience that's meaningful. Now for Eagle River, that came from being a school of less than 150 kids. So they said, what can we do that's attractive to kids, but also that uses our resources in a better way? So these are multi-age classrooms and it's about deep learning versus what grade are you in and what assignment do you need to complete to get somewhere. We got together with the teacher candidates and just talked about what did you see and what did you do and what did you really envision and how Eagle River itself looks at marking and looks at pedagogy and how we fit it into a structure. And from there was really around what are all of these resources and how do all these pieces that kind of seem to be on their own 
actually fit together and actually combine to really enrich practice and enrich learning. It was powerful to see what they're doing at Eagle River because they are building a program that's actually based on learning about bigger things. So they have a course called Happiness. You can talk about music about happiness, poetry about happiness, then you can get into the neuroscience behind happiness, the chemical reactions in the brain that make you feel euphoric. And seeing the way that the students were interacting with the material was kind of an eye-opener in that these students are actually saying, I want to know what makes you happy? Why does it make you happy? How can we express happiness in different ways? And I think structuring the courses that way just seems to make so much sense. So it's no longer a school subject, it's a life subject. Happiness was a cross-grade, cross-curricular course. I had grade eights to tens in there and we were covering competencies from social studies, English, and science. And it was an inquiry-based learning project, so kids learned how to do an inquiry. For socials, we have like Vikings, War, a bunch of classes, and I can choose what I want. So I don't have to learn all of socials. I can just learn what I want to learn to benefit me in my choices in life. Uh, I like all history. Basically, I'm kind of like that dude, so anytime a history class comes up, I'm always signed up for it. So Eagle River was probably one of the highlights of middle methods, it's because not only do they have three hour blocks in their schedule, but I was able to collaborate with one of my colleagues who has the same background as I did in science, and we were able to plan a lab for a chemistry 11. The nice thing is that since it's such a small school, we had grade 11s and 12s in the class, and we also invited a few students from VCS students. We had two of them join us in their grade at eight and nine. It's kind of great to plan such a hands-on lab and it was able to reach all the grades and all the students that were in there and everyone was really engaged. Seeing how we can get kids interested and give them voice and choice in their own education so that it means something to them, not just memorization of content and facts and figures. It was great to see these mentors really taking the principles that I'd learned about over the summer and wondered how that looks in reality and see how they were doing that in such different ways. No one school we went to did the same thing, but they were trying the same concepts in different ways and each one of them making them their own. So I think the value of being welcomed into those communities and be open with other ideas and the sense that they treated us more as a colleague than a student-teacher relationship. The relationship of care, that's always been a pillar of who I am and I thought that I was going to have to potentially give that up to be a teacher and I didn't realize that that is actually integral to the way that teaching is becoming and has been. It was an incredibly enriching experience and it just continued to validate that I, I was on the right track. The opportunity to work with Leighton has been challenging because it's been out of the box. And he pushed me farther and farther out of the box from the get-go. And every week it was like, try this, do this, push this. Like, so every limit that I thought I had, I think I learned wasn't actually a limit. It was just something I'd created for myself. So I think that has been really valuable in terms of my practice, knowing that I was able to come in with the, the background from kind of the middle in situ learning has been very, very valuable and reassuring in the sense that I have experience outside of this practicum, so even if this practicum doesn't go perfectly and I know it won't, I know that I've experienced things in other schools with other kids in different ways, so it adds to my experience on top of my practicum. We did a lot of inquiry into the BC draft curriculum with our middle methods group and with our inquiry group that we did a little bit later in the year. I focused a lot on understanding what the core competencies really mean, understanding how you can assess a student's thinking, how you can assess a student's communication skills, and how those skills are in many ways more important than what year of war was fought in. Um, so for a student to be able to inquire themselves and for a student to be able to really uh, communicate what they're learning.
The more we delved into the new curriculum, the deeper my understanding became of the core competencies and the more innovative ways to apply them to my teaching. Ideas such as critical thinking are lifelong skills. They're not necessarily a component of the curriculum that you used to be focusing on. To me, the new curriculum is all about doing what's best for our students and looking at big ideas. And I think that really resonates with me as a teacher. So it becomes not about what's the curriculum, but how do I teach and how do I view learners and do I believe in deep learning where everyone is exploring things in multiple ways. Coming into the program I was really content driven. I wanted to teach high level chemistry and having worked in middle schools now I want to work more with kids in those middle years. Uh, that's where we lose kids, where they start to shut down, where they're not engaged, they lose their sense of wonder. And I think if we work to reestablish that, we can get kids re-engaged in school.